I woke up the morning of October 31st, 1990, from a strange dream that I was pregnant again. It felt like a baby was in the womb, and my belly was round with a baby. I noticed that my period had arrived, and I was bleeding heavily. I was surprised because I had been breastfeeding. I called the doctor's office, and they said that it was probably normal, but to keep a watch on it. I packed up my newborn baby girl and book bag. Then I took a city bus to the university to attend classes that morning with my baby. I felt fine. It was only on the bus ride back home, at about 10.30am, that I felt something roll out of my body and down my pant leg when I stood up to get off the bus. Much to my horror, I realised it was a blood clot the size of a softball. I picked my clot up as people gasped and stared at me. I made the decision that I wasn't going to be able to make the few blocks walking to make it back home. I crossed the street to the hospital. I only made it as far as the grass out front of the emergency room. I was gushing blood and started to get dizzy and light-headed. I tried to get the attention of two emergency room paramedics who were smoking out front, but I couldn't make a sound louder than a whisper. I tried to fall with my arms outstretched so that I didn't fall on my baby newborn girl. I passed out while falling to the ground with my baby in my arms. Next thing I remember was waking up in the emergency room. I was receiving emergency blood transfusions and told that I had probably retained placenta from birth. They told me that they would need to do an emergency D and C to help scrape my uterus. I then was taken to surgery. I was in surgery three more times that day, yet they couldn't stop the bleeding. I was given an experimental drug that was supposed to seize my uterus and make it clamp down to get the blood loss to stop. It caused me to stop breathing instead. They were able to revive me and thought that they had fixed me. They took me to the maternity ward to recover and be reunited with my newborn daughter who needed to be breastfed. The nurse who helped me to deliver her on October 1st was just getting starting her shift. She brought me a plate of food to try to get me to eat. When I tried to sit up to, the hemorrhaging started again and it was even worse than before. I was pretty weak. They called a crash cart and asked me for my parents' phone number. I was shaking, cold, and going into shock. They weren't able to get a reading on my blood pressure, and my resting heart rate started to elevate. It was going 130 beats per minute, and then it was going over 150 BPM. I was in pain because the blood was leaving my head and arms and legs. They stuck a big needle in my neck and started pumping blood directly into my neck. I knew that I was dying and not going to make it. My heart went up to 180 and then over 200. The amount of pain was unbearable. I was scared and didn't want to die, but couldn't take pain anymore. Every cell in my body was screaming due to the lack of oxygen. I was given over 56 units of blood. I was scared, and so were the doctors and the nurse. I remember a doctor told me that they were going to operate and take my uterus out. He said that I might not survive the operation because I was so weak. I was asked to sign a medical waiver. A Catholic priest came into the room to give me last prayers. I could no longer move or talk or blink. The pain was too much. When my heart rate hit 220, I heard them say I was in defibrillation. They were trying to shock my heart. I couldn't even use my eyes anymore. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't breathe. I learned what it means to lose total control. At my darkest and lowest and saddest moment, I realized that I wasn't alone. I realized that I had a guardian angel just to the right of me. I knew his name was Michael. He was holding my hand. I realized that there was a second angel who was next to Michael. I rose above my body. I could see the doctors were very scared. I could see that my body was blue in color and in very grave condition. I was drawn into the hallway because I could hear my daughter crying for me. I tried to comfort the doctors and nurses. I wanted to tell them that it was okay. I could hear and see that nurses were fighting about me in the hallway and upset that I'd been taken up to the maternity ward. I should have been in intensive care unit, ICU, or the emergency room. At some point, a veil lifted. I was drawn into a long, dark tunnel that had a very bright white light that was shining love. I could hear harps and saw my great-uncle Harry Ed and Aunt Vicky. I was in total bliss and happiness. I was home. I didn't want to go back. I had a life review where I saw every single event from my life. I saw every act of goodness and kindness. I saw every act of spite or ill will. I also got to see it from the other person's point of view. Although time did not exist, this life review took forever, but in reality it was only a blink of a second. 
I didn't want to go back because I was surrounded by love and the light was God. I realized that we are all brothers and sisters. We all love each other very much, but we live in fear on earth and that prevents us from realizing and remembering that we're all connected. I felt such incredible love. I saw courtyards with beautiful, vibrant roses that were more colorful than on earth. I saw colors that do not exist. I understood infinity and all the knowledge of the universe. I saw white buildings that were open and in the sky. They reminded me of buildings from Greece and Athens. I saw the future for my children and I, where I came to understand that their father was not to play a role in our lives. I was told this so that I could be strong and still love him, even if he was away. I was liberated. I no longer had to love or try to please this person. I knew I had to go back, but I really wanted to stay. I knew that it would hurt to go back to my body. I truly knew that this was home. The bright light filled everything and was totally God's love, unconditional and filled with such joy and peace. I woke up in the ICU. After resuming my life, I found that nothing in life was as hard as coming back. I found that school was easy and all of life's challenges are a breeze. I am not afraid of death. I can read people's minds and see into the future. I see articles on TV or in the paper and I'm reading them 31 days into the future. I have dreams that come true and I get to visit Michael the angel or my loved ones or pets that have crossed over. I come sometimes heal people or start engines or charge batteries or open doors with my mind. I've been the person to arrive to car accidents or suicides or drug overdoses on dozens of occasions. I have performed CPR and brought people back to earth or helped them to pass over. I was not surprised when the father of my child died a few years later. I'd already been given that knowledge, Michael told me telepathically. We did not have to use words. I know when I'm going to die or may come close to it once again. I learned that everything we do matters. Even the person you smile to on your way to the bakery or work. Even the creatures big and small that you bend over to pet. Nothing goes unnoticed. It all matters. My purpose is to stand up for the meek, to be compassionate, but most of all, is to love.